Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Manas Sharma and welcome back to FizzViz. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate the adsorption energy of a molecule on top of a surface using density functional theory and quantum espresso. Now, for this tutorial, we'll be calculating the adsorption energy of the H2O or the water molecule on top of the LiH001 surface. And the adsorption energy is usually given by a formula that looks something like this. So you basically calculate the energy, the DFT energy of the total system, um, total periodic system, and then you subtract the energies of the isolated molecule, or in this case, the water molecule, as well as the slab or the surface that is in this case, the LiH001 surface. So you calculate the total energy and then you subtract the energy of the components from it and this gives you the adsorption energy and please bear in mind that if you use this formula or this convention then a negative value of the adsorption energy indicates that the adsorption is favorable however some uh, you know scientists or papers also use a reverse formula or a reverse convention for example if we go to this paper here then they use a formula where they subtract the energy of the total periodic system from the sum of the components. And in this convention, a positive value of the adsorption energy indicates that the adsorption is favorable. So just uh, keep this in mind whenever you are calculating or comparing your results with literature. And um, so we will be following this paper um, for this particular tutorial. This paper was written back in 2017 and we will obtain the structure of the H2LIH surface from the supplementary information of this material. Now I have already downloaded the supplementary uh, information and they have provided the coordinates of the H2LIH system of various supercell sizes. So they provide um, you know, systems where you have 16 atoms in the surface, 32 atoms in the surface, 64 atoms, and 128 atoms in the surface. Now for this tutorial, to keep it quick, we'll be using the second structure that contains 16 Li and 16 H atoms, giving us a total of 32 atoms in the surface and three atoms of the H2 molecule. And I have already converted this structure into a SIF file as you can see over here. So they provided it in the VASP format that is a postcard file, but here is the SIF file. And for this tutorial, what we'll be doing is we will be calculating the DFT adsorption energy using the PBE exchange correlation functional and trying to reproduce this particular value. So in this table two of this paper, they calculate the adsorption energy using a gamma point and 32 atoms in the surface, which is what we are also using. And with PBE, they get uh, an adsorption energy of 219 milli electron volts. And in our convention, it would actually be minus 219 electron volts, but um, that really doesn't matter. What matters is the magnitude. So let's see if we can reproduce this value with quantum espresso in our simulations. Now to run the quantum uh, espresso simulations, I'll be using BURAI, which is a GUI for quantum espresso that I really like. And in order to calculate the adsorption energy, we'll need to run three calculations, three SCF calculations actually. So first will be the energy SCF calculation on the total periodic system. The other would be for the isolated H2 molecule and the last would be for the isolated LiH surface. So let's come back to BORAI and import the SIF file that I already have and I'll put it in the description down below. And in fact, I'll put the link to the paper as well as all the simulation files that we create in this tutorial will be in the description down below. So please be sure to check it out. So let's import this structure into BORAI. Now it looks really good. Uh, so nothing seems odd. However, what we'll have to check is if the pseudo potentials are correct or not. Now you can see that BORAI has assigned Zero potentials of different categories to each atom. So let's be consistent and assign the same category or you know the type of the zero potential to be PAW for each of the atoms. So I'll choose, um, let's say this one, uh, which is a PAW zero potential. I, I am not choosing this one because here the cutoff of the wave function is really high. That is 102 
or uh, yeah, two red bulbs, but I'll use this one because here the cutoff, the energy cutoff is quite small. So this actually, uh, you know, speeds up your simulations if you have a smaller cutoff of energy. So let's choose this zero potential for Li. Now, similarly, let's choose a PAW zero potential for um, hydrogen atom. And again, for oxygen, let's um, choose a PAW zero potential such as this one. Now you can see in all these zero potentials that we have chosen, the um, cutoff of uh, the recommended cutoff for the energy is never more than 49 uh, Rydberg. So this should keep our simulations fast. Now let's go ahead and save this project and call it H2O Li16, H16, and save it. And then come to the SCF tab of BORAI, and here we will. Uh, write the cutoff to be 50 Rydbergs and to be safe we will set the cutoff for charge to be 500 Rydbergs that is 10 times of 50 and we will use uh, fixed occupations because this is probably a semiconductor or an insulator. So let's just go ahead and uh, save this project once again and run the SCF calculation on four threads. Okay. Now, while this is running, let's also prepare the inputs for the other two calculations, that is the isolated LIH surface. So once again, just import this SIF file into BORAI, and this time we will delete these three atoms corresponding to uh, the water molecule, so they are at the end of our file. So we will just go ahead and delete all these three um, atoms, and this just gives us the LIH001 surface. Now, once again, we will come to the elements tab to set our zero potentials, and we will again choose the same um, PAW zero potential that we chose for the total system. And let's now save this project um, by the name Li16H16. Again, come to the uh, SCF tab and uh, set the cutoff for wave function to be 50 Rydbergs, charge to be 500 Rydbergs, occupations to be fixed. And by the way, I didn't mention it, but we are using just a gamma point here because we are trying to reproduce this value in the paper and this was also obtained using a gamma point calculation. So we are just using that. Okay, so let's uh, save it again and run the SCF calculation for this particular system as well using four threads again. So we, are, we can see that the previous calculation is still running while the newer calculation is in the queue. And in the meanwhile, let's prepare the uh, uh, calculation for the third um, um, energy SCF calculation that is uh, for the isolated H2 molecule. So let's import the SIF file into BORI again. And this time we will get rid of all the LIH Adam. So just go ahead and select all these and get rid of um, these and then upload this to the GUI. Okay, so that works. However, this time I'm going to make one more change. So um, since this calculation has to be for an isolated water molecule, we need to make sure that the water molecule doesn't interact with its uh, neighboring periodic images. And I'm not sure if you know, this particular unit cell or supercell with, uh, would do the job. So let me switch to a cubic a unit cell with, um, you know, lattice parameter of 15 angstrom. And this would definitely make sure that the water molecule is not interacting with its periodic images. Again, um, we will set the same zero potential set we used before because this is really important. Otherwise, your results won't um, make sense. So let's use the PAW uh, again and save this project by the name H2O and come to the SCF tab again. And this time again, we will choose the same energy cutoff and charge cutoff. And this time again, this would be gamma point calculation because for molecules, the K points don't really make sense. Set the occupations to fixed for molecule, save it again and uh, run the SCF calculation for this system as well. Okay, so now let's see. Uh, okay, so now we can see that the previous two calculations have already finished. So let's go ahead and extract the energy. So here we will go to results and see the log file, search for the final 
total energy and here it is so the final total energy at the end is this so let's go ahead and copy this copy and then come to our browser let's say or calculator whatever I'll be using Wolfram Alpha actually and I'll paste this value over here sorry something went wrong okay copy and paste this value over here and uh, so this would be the value for the energy value for the total system then we will subtract the energy of the components so let's now go ahead and pick up the energy for the slab so again in the results log file search for the total energy that is over here go ahead and copy this and again paste it over here and I believe that the calculation for the H2 molecule is also converged now. So let's go ahead and check that out. Log file search for this exclamation mark. And actually this is still running. So let's just wait for a few minutes. Okay, so now it's done. So, okay, so now it is finished and we'll just go ahead and copy this energy again and paste it over here. And let's see what we get. So we get uh, an adsorption energy that is negative. So that indicates that the adsorption is favorable. Don't worry if it is not positive because this paper was using a reverse convention. So basically our results are equivalent right now. Both results indicate that the adsorption is favorable and we get a value of uh, 0.0164 Ritberg. So let's calculate that and come to this web app that I've created and convert this uh, value in Ritbergs to electron volts so um, based in this value in Redbugs and here is what we get so our result is that the adsorption energy is minus 223 milli electron volts and don't worry about the minus sign as I already mentioned our convention is the opposite so these two results are equivalent and our results result of 223 milli electron volts is actually quite close to the result obtained in this paper of 219 milli electron volts using VASP and the remaining differences in our results could be due to various facts so one uh, reason could be a different choice of zero potential I'm not sure what zero potential did they use another re reason could be I didn't really converge my results with respect to the energy Cut off. So maybe 50 Ritbergs wasn't enough. Maybe I should have chosen a larger value. Maybe they chose a smaller value. So these could be the reasons for this very slight difference. But overall, I think this is a really good agreement with the reference. So yeah, so that is it. In today's tutorial, you have learned how to calculate the adsorption energy of a molecule on top of a surface using quantum espresso and DFT. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. In case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or doubts, leave them in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.